It was necessary to specify critical areas for our armed forces to hang on to, so this would not lead to the fall of other areas, and these areas are either important militarily, politically, economically and for services. Clyde points to strike that determined, defiant tone of the war leader. He said at one point that defeat was a word that had no place in his dictionary. But it was obvious that here was a man with a very great deal to worry about. He has never sounded weaker than he did today. He admitted, as you say, that his he doesn't have enough troops. There's a manpower shortage in the military. And we've known about this for some time. There's been much in the way of draft dodging. There's been defections from government ranks. And then he tried to explain a series of embarrassing major military setbacks in the north, the centre and the south of the country. And he said that in certain cases it had had to be decided to let go certain areas in order to hold on to more important places, try to, do, to cast these not so much as defeats, more as strategic uh, withdrawals. But reading between the lines, what you felt Mr. Assad was saying here, that realistically is diminished, rather exhausted troops can't be asked to hold on to everything. You can only realistically ask them to hold on to a more important core of the country. But then immediately the question becomes how big, how restricted will that core be? And perhaps eventually it won't add up to much more than parts of the capital Damascus and a string of cities going up to uh, Mr. Assad's family heartland up on the coast on the northwest.